To continue with the serverless guide, let's write a Lambda function which we can invoke by our HTTP. So for this in our serverless YAML, let's create a new function. Let's call it simple HTTP for now. And the handler we will write soon. So let's give it a first name. Let's call it simple HTTP handler. And now comes the important part. And we have to define which event will trigger this Lambda. So we have to specify this events array here. And the first event or the only one which we will have a look that for now is HTTP. So we can specify that this um, AWS Lambda will be invoked over HTTP. And here we can specify first the method we want to use. So which HTTP method we want to use. Let's do a post here. And next comes a path under which we can access this endpoint. Let's make it maybe slash simple. And that's everything we need here for the serverless configuration. Let's switch back to Java and write the simple HTTP handler. So create a new class. Call it like we specified it in the serverless YAML. And within here, like we did for the other Lambda function, also implement. Oops, what happened? Also implement here the request handler interface and for now, let's say we accept a map of string object. Let's use this for now because I want to show you something uh, which is different uh, compared to the simple Lambda we developed in the series before. And for the return type, let's make it a simple string and implement the handle request method. And for now, let's just say we want to return success here. And for sure, we need semicolon. And for the first iteration, let's simply output what we get. So iterate over the map and simply print the incoming payload. So simply key value here, save it, and then build the project. Because there is now one difference compared to our um, first simple lambda, which we could uh, or which we invoked directly either with the AWS console or with serverless invoke, because if we now expose this Lambda uh, via HTTP um, in the background, uh, there will be an AWS API gateway in front of our AWS Lambda, and it will um, transform our payload and it will look a little bit differently. So let's see this, therefore deploy it. Let's hit SLS deploy. This will now deploy our serverless project and then create this new endpoint. So once this is done, we should see an HTTP endpoint, which we can invoke, for example, using curl and um, take a look at the output. Let's take some seconds. While well, this is building, let's create a new shell console. So now this is done and you see here as an output, we get now an endpoints field and this now uh, has our unique endpoint, which we specified here, which will be HTTP post and slash dev. So dev is here the, the default stage. So you could also stage your serverless project with like development, testing and production. So the default one is dev and then our path we specified here, which is slash simple. So let's copy this and use curl to invoke it. So let's say we want to post a, a simple JSON here. So let's say name Duke and use hyphen H for the header and then specify here our, our endpoint. And now you can see here curl returned internal server error. Let's curl here again. And to actually see what's going on, uh, let's take a look at the logs. So for uh, the logs, we can use uh, serverless 
uh, don't have to log into the AWS console. You can use SLS logs hyphen F, name of the lumber, lambda, get simple HTTP, minus T for trailing. So we get uh, all output. So we get the output continuously and hit the endpoint again and switch back. It might take some seconds. So we should now see here that we print out the input of the map we are receiving. What you will see here now in the log, so it's a lot. So um, in the background, um, the request is coming through the API gateway and this will transform the payload. It will use the headers we passed our HTTP request and a lot of more metadata and will pass this as a big JSON to our AWS Lambda. So within here, for example, we can't simply say we want our POJO, for example. So let's say we wanted to uh, create an endpoint to save some person. So the POJO for this could look like this. It has a name and an ID. And if we would put in here person, it would fail because the actual payload is way bigger than just the body we pass because in the background, the API gateway, like you see here, adds a lot of metadata to our request and the actual payload is here within the body key of the map so to have access to the actual body you wouldn't like uh, have to extract what's inside the body attribute and use for example uh, jackson or json to then serialize this incoming json payload back to a java pojo another important thing to note if api gateway is in front of your aws lambda like if you've seen it here in the curl statement, uh, even though our function simply shouldn't throw any exception or should basically return with a success case, like we return here a basic string, we get a 502 from our backend. So something was wrong here and it says internal server error. Even though we don't see any exception here or any hint that something went wrong. And the reason for this is that the API gateway uh, expects the response to be in a specific format. And for this, let's add a simple example how it expects the response to be. So the response needs two attributes. Let's create a simple hash map here. And uh, the response expects a field of status code. So within the status code, we can now say which HTTP code we want to return. So let's say 200 here. And next comes the body. So within the body, we have to specify what our Lambda function here actually returns to the user. Let's make it a, a inline JSON for now. So also here you could use a JSON library to serialize some data, but let's make it for now simple. Let's return this JSON here. What you can also do if you want to pass any headers. So let's say we want uh, headers to be there. You could pass them also to this map and like specify custom response headers. Let's remove this for now. And also let's change the request handler output type. So it won't be string anymore, but again, a map and also change the response type here and then simply return it. So now, once we save this, let's build the project again, and then deploy it using serverless. So there was a small typo in here, so it has to be status code with a capital, so camel case status code. And let's make it to, oh, let's make a funny HTTP response code to see that it actually works. Let's return 418 here. I'm a teapot and build the project again. Deploy it. And then invoke it again using curl. And we can now see here. So the response is actually not this map here but only what we specified inside the body here. So it will now return our small uh, JSON object here. And as you can see here, 
the HTTP status code is what we specified here. It's now 418. So for a normal use case, you would specify here 200 in the case of a success. But I wanted to show you that this actually maps to the output we get from the API gateway. So to not use this um, generic map here, you can also use a library from AWS, uh, which um, contains the basic events we have on the AWS platform. So therefore simply include the AWS Lambda Java events library to uh, the Maven project. And this library now contains the basic um, events of AWS. And there's also event for uh, the API gateway. So there's now an API gateway proxy request event and a corresponding API gateway proxy response event. So if we adjust our code to now work with these types, we have to adjust the method here and also the return type. Uh, because what we can now do is we now have uh, a type safe access to everything we are looking for. So input now has a get body field. Well, let's simply output this here. Like this. And for the response, we can create the actual uh, response. Response event is going to Let's create the object of this and let's say response event dot set body. So it's basically what we just um, did manual with our map, but uh, with this wrapper type of AWS and uh, more type safe access. So you won't make any mistakes like I did with this uh, camel case here. So status code, let's make it now 200 here. Uh, let's return this, 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 and as a response, we will now return this Java class. Oh, here I was too fast, so here's a space missing. So now we have refactored our code a little bit, but in the end it should uh, basically do the same, so we print out what we get. If you want to work with the, the payload, for example, like I mentioned, either use JSON, JSON, or any other JSON serialization library to uh, serialized payload and for the response if you actually want to return something you have to or you can use now this proxy response event and model what you want to return let's also say here we want to return some custom headers so this expects now a map again because there might be multiple headers let's simply also do a short demo for this let's create a hash map here and port map. Let's say here headers dot put say x custom header and simply put now the headers in here. So we are now have a full example where we also return some custom headers from our Lambda function and then build the project again and use SLS deploy to deploy it. So you can also see our JAR file is now a little bit bigger as we included the second library, but still below one megabyte and invoke it using curl again. And as a result, we first see our HTTP status code is now 200. We see our custom header here. So besides some headers which are added uh, in the background um, by the API gateway, we also now see our custom header. And also our payload stays the same. Here we can see the, the inline JSON we specified here. 